You know, it occurred to me that I've done several episodes about ads now and I've never actually talked about what you put into ads and what you make people do with them when they see them. So first I want to preface this by saying that um, first of all, I am recording this episode in April 2024 and so Digital marketing knowledge changes very quickly, so I'm going to try my best to make this advice general, but just know that if you're listening to this in the future, um, recommendations may have changed. Some of this may still apply, some of it may not. So please keep that in mind. Uh, and another thing is uh, when it comes to you know working with um, paid ads and your, your marketing strategy, uh, I don't believe it's a good idea to look at Facebook and Instagram ads like in isolation as your only marketing tool to get the best use out of uh, your your marketing dollars and the time and energy that you put into this stuff you've really got to look at uh, everything going on in your marketing ecosystem so that means that if you decide to do ads don't stop doing organic posts and also don't stop doing market research, avatar interviews. If you decide to do Google ads, that doesn't mean stop doing SEO. Keep doing all the other things because that will sort of help nurture and fuel the algorithm and your audience in getting to know you and trust you as the business that they want to work with. And I also talk a lot about the funnel and the funnel is really just like a representation on how to structure your campaigns and your marketing strategy. Some marketers will say disregard the funnel because uh, customers are like all over the place in your ecosystem and that's that's kind of true. Your customers will likely meet you in in different places in person via an email uh, a f email a friend forwarded to them about you uh, it could come from anywhere but for the purposes of uh, illustrating how to structure your your campaigns and your strategy uh, the funnel is still very helpful okay so now let's talk about what you actually need to put in your ads and um, where you send people to when they click on it. So when I talk about the, the funnel as, as like a model for how to structure things, we need to keep in mind what your audience member is um, comfortable with in their stage of getting to know you. Because if your ad is reaching a person for the first time and this is the first time that they're actually seeing you, the content of that ad shouldn't be something that asks too much of them, uh, especially if the item that you're selling is uh, something that is very time and or money intensive. Uh, even something like a, a free webinar, um, it, it might be a little bit hard to ask someone to sit down and listen to you for 30 minutes if this is the first time they're actually seeing you. And I actually got to thinking about this because I, I literally just got off a call with a client where we were talking about um, how to set up the ads campaign for this business. And uh, running your ads to a free thing can work. Uh, running your ads to a free thing to an audience of people who already know you a little bit works better. All right, so let's get let's not get too far off track. I'll talk about what to do in the the awareness stage of your strategy and where people are just starting to become familiar with you. Um, so especially if you're showing your ads to a new audience of people who've never seen you before, uh, like I said a moment ago, you need to make the thing that you're asking them to do um, not very hard. So. For a typical awareness level campaign, 
a lot of businesses that I know, and especially I, I do this with, with my own brand myself, is that I will just make the ad a boosted version of content I've already made. Um, so rather than boosting post, I'll actually go into the ads manager and set up a custom campaign where I set the contents um, rather than make something new. I'll use a post that I've already made and use that as the creative content. Uh, another thing you can do is create an ad that sends your audience to a free piece of content out elsewhere uh, off Facebook that doesn't really ask a lot of them. So some will actually use blog posts or uh, podcast episodes even. Just another, just make it like an easy opportunity um, to get to know you and uh, learn a little bit about your business and the type of uh, outcomes that you provide. And even better, do it in a way um, that shows you as your unique personality rather than just, you know, cold facts about how smart you are. This is why I also like to say that social media is like a party and not a billboard. People are usually going there to be entertained and catch up with what their friends are doing. And if you make those early ads, those early engagements with you more around you as a person and the personality of your brand, that'll take things much further than just having like, here's my $5,000 thing, would you like to buy it? As the, as the thing you say even before you say hello. <laughs> um, so yeah, some, some examples, like I said, of what I would use in those early awareness campaigns. Um, yeah, boost a piece of content. Um, you can, you know, use the boost post options like I explained in my other episodes but I'd actually prefer to do it uh, in the ads manager because you've got a bit more control and options there and then what you actually get your uh, objective the place that you send people to like like I suggested can be a blog post uh, it can be a podcast episode uh, I like to make it another property on Meta. So uh, at the time of speaking, at the time of recording this, I can actually create a campaign with the objective is to just go and look at my Instagram profile. And that may not be as uh, valuable as getting someone on my mailing list. But what that does, when they go and look at my, fa my Instagram profile, uh, they get tagged by uh, Meta as someone who's now in my ecosystem and I can then uh, add them to another audience of people who have engaged with one of my properties on Meta. Likewise, if you send your uh, audience somewhere like on your website where, where you've got your tracking pixel, you can then also add them to a pool of people who've visited your website. Uh, and then those people who have started to show interest in your brand and your presence and your website you can take them a step down and a little bit further in the funnel so in the more sort of uh, consideration and evaluation part the people who've already seen you and have already visited your profile already visited your website are the kind of people that you'd want to retarget with uh, offers that again uh, ask a bit more than just going to look at your page or a post um, but since they've already shown interest in your content and have maybe uh, seen you a few times and have visited your website then it's not a bad time to ask them for something that's a little bit more involved so that could be your free offer or your low cost offer your 15 minute discovery call something like that uh, and then it's it's those people who have taken interest in your low cost things and your free things. Um, they move a step down into an even deeper audience. And those are the ones who you can go ahead and 
make you more expensive offer to because if you make that more expensive offer to again people who just barely know you um they're far less likely to be interested but if you really want people to give you their money um it has to come from a place of them already knowing about you and already you know having the comfort and trust to give you their email address because um yeah giving giving out your email address these days is kind of like a risky thing because nobody wants to be bombarded with spam and uh, people are anxious about their email address now being snapped up uh, by a third party so if if your middle of the funnel campaign sends you know somebody to a free offer and you collect their email address that's like that's like a really major sign of trust um, just you know just giving giving you their email address and um, it, it may be, yeah, you know, nowhere near them giving you money, but it's a start. And going back to the start of the episode where I said that you got to look at like your whole online ecosystem and not look at Facebook ads in isolation, you could just have ads to, to grow your email list, like rather than, you know, getting more sales because... I am actually a big advocate for email marketing and it has it has one of the best return on investments of all the marketing channels out there and yeah um those people who you know sign up to your email list and, and open your emails and stick around in your ecosystem there are also like more likely to be those people who who give you money um I like to I like to play a, a very uh long and slow game with with social media and and online marketing generally because that's that's the, the reality of it especially when you are selling uh high ticket and high touch things the more commodity based things like the example i, I like to use is um dog jackets <laughs> um but it, you know even even stuff like clothing and and jewelry and and tools and food i get ads for japanese snacks because i love those things but can't buy them all the time um yes stuff like that uh it it doesn't really like require that much thought and commitment and if i like spend 10 bucks on japanese snacks that i saw in an ad and ended up not liking them like i'm not going to be as devastated as if I saw an ad for a $5,000 business coaching course and <laughs> and it didn't feel like I got my money's worth out of it. You know, I, I would much rather um, get to know that business offering that course. Um, I'd, I'd rather get to know them over time, but before making a big investment like that. Um, so I hope I hope this gives you some perspective and helps you understand uh, the funnel and give you a, gives you an idea of what to put in your ads. And um, like these these examples that I've given don't have to be what you use. Because um, another thing I found from having this conversation with my client is that you might like do do a course or or follow a guide from another marketer, and they'll tell you like. To, they'll give you like a specific thing that you create your ad for and a specific web page or, or something that you send your, you send your ads to and uh, I want to say it doesn't have to be like that uh, the thing the creative element that you put in your ads um, that's that's unique to you and your business and your way of doing things and your target audience and um, and the, the free thing that you send people to doesn't have to be like a video. It doesn't have to be a blog post. It could be like a low ticket thing. It could be like a, you know, template to help someone figure something out. Um, like you really don't have to copy what other people are doing. 
it's it's all right to do to want to do things your own way and if you're at the stage where you don't really know um what your target audience is interested in like you're going to have to do research and conduct avatar interviews and get to know them better and put out more organic content on social media just create stuff create things see what gets the most responses I <laughs> I could go on there's so many different tangents here like I and my, my expertise here is really like mostly in the the ads platform and like the, the technical side of things there's there's so many directions to go in and, and so many different aspects to like this and um, and I will say again, like you can't just look at ads in isolation. You gotta gotta have all your digital spaces. Um, even even offline marketing, um, they all gotta work in harmony together because they do. Like they all matter. It's not like people on on Facebook are like on this planet of only Facebook people. Like all the stuff that you go out and do in person as your brand as your business like that matters too that that all accounts for something that talking to people at events and and speaking in places like it all counts so yeah again um i really hope this helped put things into perspective for you and um, if you've got questions to do with facebook ads or just general digital marketing uh, please don't hesitate to reach out because I love making these episodes and I really love sharing my advice and helping you out. Take care and I wish you all the best on your business journey.